Jeremy Delacy here from Sweet Science of Fighting, taking you through another breakdown. It's been a little while, but today we have Tenshin Nasukawa. He, if you're not familiar, he is one of the more explosive strikers in the realm of boxing and kickboxing. So this is just a, a training highlights video. It's not anything that he's done, for example, in a training camp example. So it's just a bunch of random exercises kind of thrown together, I think, from social media. So it is difficult to say, you know, what, when, where, how, why. So we'll be making a lot of inferences. Again, nothing against coaches, trainers, fighters, etc. It is all for just my personal opinions, etc. So this is interesting. So we're going heavy hip thrust, but he's on his toes doing it. I'm not sure if that's intentional or if it's so heavy that he has to get on his toe so typically when you're doing a hip thrust when you're trying to really nail the glutes and a little bit of the hamstrings you're really trying to nail the hip extension you typically want to keep your feet flat you're almost going to push through the heels in this instance so you can get that full hip extension and really nail the glutes when you come up on your toes like that you really reduce the feeling of the glutes to the hip extension you really start to nail the the quads there so I'm not sure the purpose that he's using this for. Maybe he's coming up on the to toes for a reason. I don't know what that reason would be, but typically if I would advise if you're going to do the hip thrust, keep your feet flat, push through your full foot, mainly towards a heel, and you want to get that full hip extension at the top. <clears throat> it could be because it's trying to be a little more specific to throwing knees and, and teeps and things like that, but I am not entirely sure. So what else we got going on? Okay, so explosive push-ups, full body ones. There's nothing much to say about that. Uh, I do remember seeing this video on. Okay, then we got some. I don't know why this is like this area. Okay, so we got some, looks like we got some assault treadmill runs close to a sprint. Yep, nothing wrong with doing your runs. Damn, he's getting quick. Uh, what else we got? Then we got the infamous ladders. Now, I will say that people will often point to something like this and be like, this, this is the reason for why he's so fast or it's helping him develop that speed. He is one of the f fastest strikers you'll ever see fight. But it is definitely not because of the ladder drills that he's doing. He's likely fast going through these ladders because he is already damn fast twitch. He has those genetics and he has just laid into them through years of striking <clears throat> and doing this again it's not going to make you faster it's not going to make you a more agile fighter and i've touched on this many many times that agility is a reaction to a sport specific stimulus so you need to be seeing strikers in front of you throwing punches doing different movements and you're able to solve that problem and that is what makes you agile in combat sports not going through ladders because fast feet doesn't matter if you're moving in the wrong direction or moving into a punch as an example looks like then we got some trx mountain climbers so it's also like he's going for time this is, looks like it's part of a almost like a conditioning routine uh interestingly so it's almost like a ladder drill into a sprint into the mountain climbers at full speed so i mean it's like almost like they're trying to do a kind of speed power interval circuit kind of thing out of this I think the issue is at the exercise selection potentially within this. The sprint's okay because you're you're getting maximal speed, maximal power outputs with stuff like this. You're kind of getting more into the endurance realm, and then the latter kind of doesn't really add any value in the beginning. <clears throat> and my better idea would be just to do the sprint, um, or you could do some kind of re repeat throws or jumps, etc. Those would be uh, different options. So this would be uh, what we would coin a shock method. So I've talked about the shock method previously. I can't remember what video it was. It might have been Sugar Sean, potentially. But essentially, it's using gravity to drop your body mass or drop uh, a weight, and you're able to quickly rebound out. And I had a comment on a previous video about the shock method being, I mentioned about plyometrics and shock method. I talked about them almost kind of as mutually exclusive. Shock method is a form of plyometric training. Um, but it is one of the more intense or very intense variations. And there aren't a lot of people that 
need to go this far in their training in terms of doing plyometrics. It's one of those very intense stimuli that you would save almost like an ace card up your sleeve because you can still get a lot out of doing all your other jumps and plyometrics and throws before you even need to get to anything like doing the shock method, which would be things like this push-up variation. It would be uh, drop jumps and depth jumps, which is stepping off a box and jumping as high as you can with the least amount of time on the ground as possible. Um, and then you've also got uh, supine medicine ball, I guess you could say catch throws. So someone dropping the medicine ball, you're lying on your back and you're throwing it straight back up. Um, I think that's a more of a low level variation that I think you can is better to use initially, and then you can potentially progress to things like this. Um, but it's not something that I would prescribe to most people. And in fact, I've very rarely prescribed any kind of shock training to the hundreds of professional athletes that I've worked with, just because it's it's not needed <laughs> for for most people. the The training edge in the gym just isn't there. So just bear that in mind. It's obviously it's a good tool to use, but it's just not something that you need to use too early because you can just eat benefits out of everything else you're doing. Um, you can see on this one as well, the because of the drop so high in here. So the this would be like a la a, a long ground contact plyo push up, right? So he's coming down, and how long that is, he has to push back up. So there's obviously value in doing longer and shorter ground contact times so being able to produce that or redirect that force quickly versus a little more slowly so you can kind of play around with that uh, i don't know if we have any more training clips in here oh yeah we've got the bulgarian bag swings it's a good exercise this one a full body trunk exercise uh, what else we got is that it for training i think that's it for training i know we got something here yeah whoa triple switching damn he's quick <laughs> i would almost advise you to give this a go but i'm gonna tell you not to give this a go because that's pretty insane speed to be able to switch you typically you're switching like forward and back and then landing but he's going three times and landing that's just how damn quick he is um in terms of applications of, of this exercise you can use this as part of a complex so for example you might do say a heavy lower body strength exercise like a squat and then you might superset with something like this um, you could even use it as part of maybe your speed power exercises uh, at the beginning of your session so if you're going from say faster to slower so maybe you've done your general warm-up and you're ready to go you might do this as one of your first or second exercises um, along with maybe some kind of throws and then into maybe some kind of full body loaded power exercise uh, and then you that's pretty much the two main applications that you would use something like this typically you wouldn't use it say at the very end of your session typically just because that's when you're most fatigued and then you're obviously not getting the speed and power that you want from it so the adaptations aren't there but um i think that is all his training footage in there so if you enjoyed this please let me know down in the description if there's anyone else you want me to break down if there's any videos you find you can even send them to me on instagram and um yeah, I'll see you in the next video.